I would love to explain to you who this is. I heard these gentlemen uh, four years ago now, read the Bible six times, and then I went to Metropolitan Museum right up here. You can go up here and see all these pictures of Jesus Christ that are white. When were they made? 1400s, right after the Dark Ages. Why did we go into the Dark Ages? We went into the Dark Ages to cover up all the black men and get rid of all the printing and all of the pictures of the black men in history. That's why we were in the Dark Ages. Where did we come out of the Dark Ages? We came out in Rome, Italy. Michelangelo was paid by the Vatican to draw these pictures. All those pictures you see of Jesus Christ in the Metropolitan Museum right now in New York City were made in 1400s by the Vatican. A man was paid to draw those. Israel. Welcome to another edition of Yasha Allah Library. Today, I'm going to answer an email that we received not too long ago on our website, therealjewsofblack.com. I received an email from a brother where he asked me to give him a list of books that he could read that could help him better understand some of the latter history of our people. For instance, some of the history during the Byzantine Empire. Now I'm going to make a statement. The Bible is the highest knowledge on the face of the earth. That is indisputable and without question. And there is no book on the planet earth, no spiritual book, no religious book, or no history book that can be mated or equated to the Bible. That is indisputable. We know that. However, there is some things in history that are relevant and can be used to further illustrate things that are written in the Bible. But before we get to those things, let's read a couple of scriptures. Let's start off with the book of Isaiah, the 34th chapter, and the 16th verse. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. The book of the Lord, as we all know, is the Bible. Reading on. No one of these shall fail. This is how you know that the book of the Lord, the Bible, is a true book. It says, no one of these shall fail. What are the these? The these are the prophecies. No prophecy in the Bible is going to fail. Every single prophecy in the Bible will come to pass. Reading on. None shall want her mate. What does that mean? Meaning that you cannot equate the Bible to any other book on the planet Earth. You have people that try to equate the Bible to the Quran. They're not equal. The Quran is lies and the Bible is truth. You have people that try to equate the Bible to the Egyptian Metuneta or Book of the Dead. There's no comparison. The Metuneta and the Book of the Dead are lies and the Bible is the truth. You cannot make the Bible with any other book on the planet Earth. And the Bible stands head and shoulders over every other book on the earth because of the laws, statutes, and commandments and the prophecies in the Bible, none of which can be found in any other book on this earth. So you have to stick with the Bible. Reading on. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered it. So the Most High's mouth has commanded the prophecies to come to pass, and when it is time for the prophecies to come to pass, the Most High sends forth his mighty angels, and these angels cause these prophecies to happen on this earth. Moving on to the next scripture. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 12. And it says, And further, 
by these my son be admonished. So by these words, Solomon is admonishing his son to be admonished. He's telling his son, I should say, to be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. There are millions and millions of books on this earth that you can read. There's no end to books on this earth. Reading on, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of these history books so that you don't have to do much studying in these history books. That's the reason why I do these topics. Because you really need to be studying the Bible. That's the main book that our people need to study. And a lot of times when people get caught up in these history books, sometimes they're reading the history books more than they read the Bible. But at the same time, I can understand why brothers want to know about these history books. Because we make very, very, very controversial statements as Israelites. When I first came into truth, the first time that I heard the high priest of Shia in the year 1992 say that William Shakespeare was a black man, I, I thought he was crazy. When he said Merlin the magician, the enemy of King Arthur was a black man, I thought he was crazy. When he said King James is a black man, I thought he was crazy because those statements seem totally far out. So my goal from that day on was to know everything that he knew. Where was he getting this information? So over the years in Israel, over the last 20, 21 years, I have accumulated a lot of the books and the history books that the elders showed me. So now I'm in return passing this information down to brothers and sisters. I wanna be clear one last time, and again, I know a lot of you brothers, you already know this, but it still cannot go without saying. You must study the scriptures. The Bible says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. That's what you're supposed to be searching. But again, the history is important because some things in the history can help people get a better understanding of the scriptures as well as help them get over certain stumbling blocks. Let me give you an example. And then I'm going to go into the list. Uh, we did a video not too long ago on King James addressing two of the biggest lies about King James. Number one, it said that King James is a homosexual. We proved that to be a lie. Number two, it said that King James translated the Bible. We proved that statement to be a lie because those things sometimes are stumbling blocks that keeps our people away from coming to the truth. We did a video called The 13th Tribe where we showed historical evidence that the so-called white man that lives in Israel today, the vast majority of them, their lineage goes back to the Khazar Empire of Eastern Europe. That's where they descend, and they are not the 12 tribes of Israel. See? So some of these history books have a lot of relevance. So let's get right down into it. Here's a quick list of some history books that you might want to add to your collection. And these are some books that I'm going to go into in the future because a lot of these books are extremely long and I seriously doubt, brothers, that you have time to read them all. So I'm going to show you the relevant parts that you can use in your teaching and where the elders, where a lot of the brothers you hear teaching, where they get this information from. I'm starting off with a book called Ancient and Modern Britons. I'll be doing a show on this in the near future. I'm not sure when. Why is this book so important? There's a lot of meat in this book. In this book, it tells you about the black Irish. In this book, it tells you about the black Dutch. In this book, it expounds greatly about the black Scottish. Why are the black Scottish important? Let me give you an example. I'm going to read a quick excerpt from this book called Ancient and Modern Britons. I'm going to do a whole show on this but I'm going to read a quick excerpt, and I'm going to tell you why this book is important. I'm going to page 206, and I'm reading about a man by the name of Sir James Douglas, a very important man in Scottish history, okay? And I'm reading the highlighted caption. It says, Godscroft remarks that he is said to have been a black and swart complexion, a black and swart complexion. Now, let's look at that word swart. When you go to the dictionary, the word swart, when you look it up, it means black. The word swart comes from the 
German word swars, S-W-A-R-Z. What does that mean? It means black. And the Germanic language comes from the Latin language. And the word in Latin is sordis or dirt, meaning dark brown. That's where you get the word swart from. So why does the word swart have relevance? The word swart has relevance because King James's father was known as what? Henry Stuart Lord Darnley. And the word Stuart comes from the word swart, which means black. The reason why he was known as Stuart was because he was black. See that? Going back to this book again. I'll read that statement again. God's Croft remarks that he is said to have been a black and swart complexion, an expression somewhat stronger than used by Barber. This dusky skin earned for him, say the historians, the title of the Black Douglas. So Sir James Douglas became known in history as the Black Douglas because he was swart, meaning he was dark. Now let's jump down a paragraph. It says here, we see this by looking at the chiefs of his clan without even taking their followers into consideration. For not only was the good Sir James known as the Black Douglas, but so also was his grandson, a son of Archibald the Grim. So James Douglas, his grandson, was also called a Black Douglas. See that? Reading on. So apparently was the eighth Earl of his line as well. So eight descendants later, that son was known as the Black Douglas. All these were black people. Jumping over to page 207. I know I'm skipping a lot, but I'm going to do a show on this. It says here, wherever you encounter the Black Douglas in history, anybody from that clan or tradition, you find that he is a black man. The Douglas family of Scotland, one of the most famous families in Scottish history, were black people. Check that out. See? So all these things are relevant because when you trace the lineage of the kings of England and the kings of Scotland, you're going to find out a lot of them were black, not white. And by the way, this book, Ancient and Modern Britons, was written by a white man named David MacRitchie. Okay? And there's a whole bunch of other great tidbits of information in this book and I'm going to do a show on it very soon I promise a great book to link this book with is the book called Nature Knows No Color Line Okay, this book is by a black scholar by the name of J.A. Rogers now I'm glad that J.A. Rogers wrote the book that he wrote because you have a lot of uh, unlearned scholars particularly those that call themselves Egyptologists and when you try to use a white scholar they try to say oh you're always using a white man so you can link this white scholar, David McRitchie, with this black scholar named J.A. Rogers and show that pretty much they were saying the same information. David McRitchie wrote the words. J.A. Rogers, when you go through his book, he has the crests and pictures and icons of these black royal families of Europe. Okay? And by the way, the Bible does state what? In the mouth of two or three witnesses. Doesn't it say that? It's really referring to Israel, of course, but when you have two or three historical scholars saying that these people were black, guess what? Yeah, they were black. So again, another good book to get is a book called Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. By the way, these two books, you can get them on Amazon.com. They have them available. I looked recently. As a matter of fact, a lot of members of our camp, Lines of Israel, are actually in the process of getting this book because I want brothers to know the history of King James's family, specifically his paternal line through Scotland. All right? Moving on, another good book historically about England is the book called Oxford Illustrated History of British Monarchy, okay? I've seen this particular book on um, Amazon.com again. I've also seen it in Barnes and Nobles. I'm sure people are selling it on eBay. Another great book showing a lot of black ancestors in England, okay? And again, the reason why this stuff is important is because these are the people through the line that were related to King James, a black man who the Most High used to translate the Bible. All right, so we're gonna go over this stuff later.